100% confidence. The fractional reserve system, which has been put in place, they knew what would happen to it, but it created such a great level of differential advantage for their control, for the corporate structure and everything else. I don't think they wanted it to fail. This is why the boom and bust cycle is what it is. It's completely contrived. I will admit that to you. But they have a very delicate balance right now because the people, and especially in the West, if the system fails the way it should, the way it mathematically should, just like every bust should be about ten times worse than it really is, but it's not because that's why the Federal Reserve was created, the lender of last resort. They always create a new okay. bubble. They, well, of course they do. and they, This is the way it has to work, though. It's, it's a natural phenomenon. It's not as rigged as you think it is because it's, the money has to go somewhere, but they do protect it. And right now we're seeing the top of this pyramid scheme collapse. And I think the elite, even though they have their power consolidation, they know that they have to walk a very delicate line because the public is going to lose it. The public, they're going to lose control of the public if they allow another depression. The public uh, actually, sir, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. I mean, let's go back to what you just said there. Uh, the, the central banks are cutting off liquidity to the real market and the population of the world. They are then, while telling the public the money's going to them, conduiting all of the fiat currency to themselves while it still has some value, while they consolidate real assets. And Business Week and the Financial Times of London properly say that this is actually good for that small inner group of banks to consolidate. I'm not saying it isn't, Alex. I don't know where you're getting that. I'm, I'm well, I mean, I got audio clips from the film is where I got that. Well, if you listen to the first zeitgeist, I make it extremely clear about the, the interests of the international bankers. Look, I overall think your film is healthy and good and thought-provoking and great. It's just that I've always told my listeners, don't make what I'm saying a religion where I'm infallible and, every, and, and you know, question me. And I'm saying, you know, uh, that, 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 and obviously no work can be complete. None of it can be perfect. I, I'm hoping here, and I'm sure you've got things you can teach me, to open up avenues of discussion and refinement, not in your overall idea, but in how people are interpreting it. Because certainly you know about the socialists and the Fabian socialists and the engineers uh, and H.G. Wells and, and Bertrand Russell and all them saying about 90% of what you're saying at the end of Zeitgeist Addendum, uh, but overlaying it with government central control to be able to construct it. Well, I couldn't disagree more based on the fact that what has been presented might sound like socialism. It might sound like Marxism because of those kernels of element of having a system that's designed for society as opposed to everyone fighting each other in order to, to survive in this monetary system-based competition illusion that's been created. The difference is the entire foundation of this is that it's related to science purely. And think about all the early Fabian socialists and all these guys, whatever their intent was, negative or positive, they had no concept of what technology is, and neither does half the people on this planet. All right, stay there, stay there. Full audience right now. Here we go. Hey, let's keep this rolling underneath our guest. I'm going to try to control myself and just sit here and write notes. I'm going to shut up for 10 minutes, Peter Joseph, creator of Zeitgeist. And, 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 and you just run with what you're really saying overall, trying to encapsulate it all, and then I'll come in with uh, some of my primitive uh, musings here. My feeble mind will try to grasp it. Uh, but, uh, again, I want to say overall I think your film's healthy and uh, thought-provoking. I think these uh, discussions are important, and people shouldn't allow institutionalized religion or anything uh, to uh, shudder. Uh, their intellect uh, from trying to grasp the whole width, breadth, and depth uh, of this multifaceted, multivariate universe uh, that we swim in. So, creator of Zeitgeist, you go ahead. You got the floor. All right. Well, the first thing we need to discuss is the monetary system itself and the system that is underlying, or the, the belief system that is perpetuated by this structure. The, the greatest failure of our society for thousands and thousands of years is to not address the root causes of human behavior. And the monetary system has created one of the worst behavioral complexes that society has ever seen. It is compounding age-old instincts which have very little relevance to progress at all, including things like competition. If I was to ever call it an instinct, I'd say it's a natural culmination due to environment. If you're put it into an environment of scarcity where there's no work, no jobs, you're going to be forced to steal. Your aberrant behavior is a creation. It's not inbred whatsoever, and I can defend that on multiple levels, but I'm going to move on to talk about the system itself, the monetary system. It doesn't matter if it's free enterprise, it doesn't matter if it's communistic or capitalistic or, or socialist. These are loaded terms based on, based on basically outmoded ideologies that are no longer relevant. What we have is a system of competition that's inherently based on the assumption that human beings must fight with each other in order to survive. 
That's one. The second point is that human beings have to have incentive in order to be motivated to do something. And these are two extremely dangerous and ill-gotten perceptions of human behavior. The first mode to the effect that to the effect that human beings need to have incentive. I'll go to that one first. Is human beings motivation can come from many different places. When you're a child, you have all sorts of interests that you pursue. You have any all sorts of creativities that you find fascinating. You don't know what money is. You don't need incentive to do something. Einstein and Galileo, all of these great men that contributed, they didn't need money as incentive to do something. This is something they did on their own accord. Unfortunately, the brainwashing of society has forced people into a disposition where they want to be rewarded for what they do, and that means they want monetary compensation. No one will do anything in society without reward, and that includes solving social problems. If you can't make money off of solving a social problem in the system, it won't be done. And that is a very, very sad state of affairs. The first part, the first mention that I made, where humans have to fight to compete for, for labor and income, the scarcity that exists in the system, this is created by the monetary system, not only through the fractional reserve system, but in the very structure itself. You can't have a society and expect progress in civil arrangements, ethics, decency, whatever you want to call it, morality, in a system where everyone is gaining off of everyone else through differential advantage. This, this can't work, it doesn't work, and it's never going to work. This is the why the world is what it is today almost exclusively based on this competitive notion that is compounded and perpetuated by the monetary system. And this is the greatest failure that people don't understand. This is why I argue against it. I'm not saying that the Venus Project, and they're the first to admit this as well, is the end all. There, there's no utopia. But they recognize this core element that is, that is corrupting human behavior, so we have to move out of this system. One of the things that people don't realize about the monetary system, which is very important, I think you should think about this too, at least in this, this fabled free enterprise system specifically, is that it always leads to corruption. We say that the free enterprise system is, you know, it could be great, it could be pure. You could have a perfect free enterprise system and it would work. Well, there's no such thing as that because it automatically leads to corruption. It automatically leads to oligopoly and monopoly. It automatically leads to aberrant behavior and power consolidation because that's the basis of it. That is the guiding principle, differential advantage. In order for society to progress, you have to eliminate this differential advantage and all the social stratification that occurs because of it, all the materialism. We have an advertising system that sits there and tells us that our value is based on what we own and how an artistic representation is our, our, our creativity is what we own, who we are, our identities are what we own. And this is a colossal and tremendous distortion that needs to be overcome. So the basis of this argument is that we have to have a new system that gets rid of these tendencies. This thing called the New World Order that people talk about all the time, and I actually would like you to come back on the air and answer a question for me, and that is, what is the New World Order as you define it, Alex? What is the New World Order as I define it? I want, well, what is it, this, in a concise definition, tell me what, if you were to explain this to, to someone who never even heard of such a thing, in a real concise manner, what is the New World Order? It is a hereditary uh, clan that uh, rules through the fraudulent fractional reserve monetary banking scam um, that uh, operates through intelligence uh, systems uh, and shadow governments. Uh, and their goal is what? Their goal is hyper-dominance and to uh, control the past, the present, and the future, to set up a worldwide police state uh, by manipulating people's primitive uh, fears with manufactured terror threats, biological threats, chemical threats. Uh, their, their end game is to exterminate, uh, well, most of them now say 99% of the population, the public documents say 80%, and to create then a machine utopia uh, where the elite and their progeny go to the stars. It is a worldwide uh, eugenics cult uh, that is in control of uh, most of the resources uh, on the planet and is eradicating the family uh, and the free market uh, and then, of course, demonizing the free market by claiming this corrupt system they have is a free market and uh, are uh, now in the final phases of their worldwide consolidation, their victory, which uh, people are causing, calling a collapse or failure. And what is the path you think everyone should take to, to stop this, 
New World Order. The path is uh, multifaceted. We have to take control of our local political units first. We have to stop the electronic voting machine fraud system. Uh, to do that, we have to discredit the system, discredit the corrupt uh, government that all the parties have been bought and paid for. We've entered a very deep uh, you know, uh, sector of the corruption uh, you know, on the graph, one of the deepest points uh, in the trough. Uh, well, what about the people, though? What about these people that are the ones that are perpetuating this? What is your solution for these people? What do we do with these people, so to speak? I mean, what is your well, solution? I don't like bloody French-type revolutions, which then turn into something almost you know, even worse. I think they need to be identified, exposed, and then uh, they need to be tried by juries of their peers. They need to be given fair trials and uh, sent to prison. And then their assets need to be uh, nationalized to pay off all the fiat debts uh, they have uh, created. We need to have a population where we don't restrict Madison Avenue telling us we're inadequate so they can sell us products.